Before you can fully appreciate what women have achieved in today's Coast Guard, it helps to look back on the role women have played in the history of our nation's coastal defense. The U.S. Coast Guard is the oldest continuously operating sea service in the United States. Uh, was the first one that was enacted uh, after the Constitution. Coast Guard historian William Thiessen says women were a part of things almost from the beginning, serving in coastal defense posts as part of the Lighthouse Service, a predecessor of the Coast Guard. So actually the, the, U, the U.S. Coast Guard pioneered the role of uh, women not only in uh, a military service but in the federal government as well. By the early 1940s, women had made their presence known throughout the Coast Guard, both as civilians and in the uniformed service. Well, there were above 10,000 women that served in the Coast Guard in World War II, and it's really just grown since that time. Interest really took off in 1976, when the Coast Guard Academy became America's first service academy to accept female applicants. In 2011, Rear Admiral Sandy Stowes took over as superintendent becoming the first woman in the nation's history to run a military academy. So the Coast Guard really pioneered that as well, bringing uh, women to the uh, academy in the late 70s, uh, integrating them onto ships in the 80s. The trend towards full service integration continued through the 1990s and on into the following decade when Operation Iraqi Freedom created a demand for combat support from the Coast Guard. They were serving actually as uh, force protection for larger coalition assets such as warships uh, and a lot of times they were serving further into enemy territory during combat operations than any other vessels. One of them, Coast Guard Cutter Aquidnik, was commanded by Holly Harrison, the first female commander of a Coast Guard vessel in a combat zone and the first to receive a Bronze Star. We were escorting humanitarian aid up to the, the, the the port so that that could then be further distributed into uh, Iraq. So we were trying to keep the Iranians out of Iraqi waters. They were harassing Iraqi fishermen in Iraqi waters. Basically we need to make sure there were no Al-Qaeda on board, there were no uh, Iraqi leadership on board, no wealth of the nation escaping and being taken elsewhere. So we had to screen all these vessels just pouring out of the river. Right now the way it looks, we're going to move the ship on Sunday. Big week for us is really the second week. Monday morning we're going to get underway. I don't think gender really matters to her. It was really just getting the job done. She's another Coast Guardsman and uh, Cutterman and she was there just to get the job done and, and uh, I don't think anybody else in her uh, crew felt any different either. Make sure that you have the up-to-date information so that when you update the XO we can knock off as many of those discrepancies as possible. You know, it's funny, I get asked a question about being a woman in the military quite a bit because people see it as a novelty, but I never have. It was a complete non-issue for the Coast Guard, which is actually how I prefer it. As Commander Harrison sees it, there's something of far greater significance than gender that characterizes the men and women she serves with. I think Coasties are doers. That's why we joined the Coast Guard. We don't want to sit in an office. We don't want to sit behind a desk. We're here to make a difference in whatever way that we contribute to doing that. And particularly you're talking here on a ship, Cutterman, we're out there to get the mission done. 